Hello Wargamers, I'm here with a new video. This time I will do a paint tutorial step by step on how I paint my Renegade Wars. This is a miniature I'm going to use to, for this tutorial, so all the paint job is going to be based on that miniature. In the tutorial you will see how I do the blacks, the reds and some of the details. But first of all, we have to think that we have to do some preparation on this miniature. So, the last Renegade Wars I'm doing are based on the plastic kit for Karian Imperial Guard. So, the first thing I do is I shave all the eagles or aquilas from all the details of the miniature. And the only change I do on the miniature is on the head. So, what I did is I look on my rest of beads and I look for different heads to be put on these miniatures. In that way, they look different and the changes are very minimal. And now let's go on the paint job. So the base was half done when I started taking pictures. I follow the same steps I explained on my tutorial of how to do 5 seating, five city bases. So I just apply some dry brush with the grays and then I rust heavily this tube. To do my Renegade War, I use Black Prime, as you can see in these pictures, and I keep separate the last gun from the miniature since the last moment. In, as this one is also the box operator, I also keep the box operator separate from miniature, as it's going to be easier to paint. As you can see, I keep them attached to the sprue, because it's helping a lot to handle these parts when you want to paint them. I start finishing the base. To do that, I use a mixture of silvery green and putrid green to do some liquid flowing out of the pipe. So I mix the two greens and I paint like they are flowing out of the pipe. So as you can see, I use the dark green on the edges and the most light green in the middle to give this appearance of acid or like a biohazard liquid. Once I consider that the base is finished, I start with the miniature. So first I apply corn red for the trousers, some details on the miniature and also for the last gun. Here another picture of how red is applied on the miniature. Once red is completely dry, I apply Agvax Earth Shade. This is a, a shade that I use a lot for Grange Workshop and it's giving very good results on red. As, as I want to do very dark red for these miniatures, it's matching very well and it's helping a lot to do the highlights. There is one thing that I want to clarify. For that miniatures, I try to use fast techniques that are giving very good results. So I, use, I look for techniques that are saving time and it's giving, it's giving quite a good result when you do an army. The reason why is because I have to, I'm painting about hundreds of these guys. So I, I don't have the time to spend a lot, so I cannot spend a lot of time on each miniature and going for all the details and doing a lot of shades and a lot of highlights. So normally I try to use only three levels of highlight. So I use a base color, then I do a wash, and then I do some highlights. Two, one or two highlights after the wash. In the case of the black, you will see that you cannot do washes, so I will play more with the highlights. So if you're looking for a golden demon techniques, this is not your video. While the watch is drying up on the miniature, I start working on the box device. So in that case, I, I want to do some details on bronze and I use Sikorax bronze for that purpose. This is a better, a better picture where you can see easily where I apply the bronze color. I use Cadian flesh tone for all the flesh of this miniature, mainly are the face and the hands of the miniature. For that miniature I decide to go for brown hair, so in that case I use Camry brown. I think it's, good, it's giving a very nice color for brown hair and it's quite realistic. I'm using Volgan metal for all the metallic parts of the miniature. The belt buckle is also in metallic using volume metal. I think the bird is quite a centerpiece 
of this miniature. So I wanted to give a little bit more of attention to the bird. So what I, I wanted to do some more layers of highlights or shading. So I apply a very soft dry brush of Rackard Fresh on the edges of the bird and the hair. Here you have a better picture with better light. I think you can appreciate the touch of the Rackard Fresh on the brown. And then I apply Agrax Air Shade. It's giving very nice shades on this bird and hair and contrasting very well with the colors I used to paint it. Here another picture of the result after applying the wash. And here a picture from the back. What is interesting on that picture is you can see that the wash, when it's fresh, is very shiny. But if you look at the trousers of the miniature, you can see that the wash, when it's dry, is very matte and it's giving very nice results on the miniature. I also apply the, this wash on the bronze areas. It's giving a very nice touch and the metal will look older and not that shiny. And I apply null oil on all the metallic parts for the same purpose. I want to kill the shininess of the metallic paint and this is giving a very nice touch and will look like old metal. One of the last washes I apply is Raceland Flesh Shade that I apply on all the flesh areas. Here another picture of after applying Raceland Flesh Shade. Look that on the hands, fingers are very well delimited and also around the A's you have a very nice shades. Once the, I apply all the shades, I start doing all the highlights. So in that case, I start applying Adeptus Battle Grey on all the black areas. I applied it at the edges of the armor plate, at the top of the wrinkles, and also all the edges around the box operator device. I also highlight with Adeptus Battle Grey all the wrinkles on, on the arms of the uniform. After I did the highlights on the black areas, I started applying corn red. So first I apply corn red on the trousers to highlight all the wrinkles. Reason is as I apply the wash, the color is darkening quite a lot. So I apply again corn red to move back to the original color. Also, after applying the grey highlights, is I think is the best moment to start applying or to start doing the free hands. So in that case, I do three free hands: one on the box operator device, another one in one of the shoulder pads, and another one on the chest of the guardian. In that picture, you can see better the free hand on the chest of the guardian. Also look that in this picture you can also appreciate better that I did the edges of the jacket of the uniform with the red. Here you have a closer picture of the freehand I did on the box operator device. And here a picture of the freehand on the shoulder pad. In that picture I want to show you what is the result after applying the wash and the first highlight with corn red on the trousers. When I started painting this army, I was only applying one highlight on the black areas. So I was only applying Adeptus Battle Grey or similar grey on all the black areas. But I was not very happy on the end result as the miniature was looking not very lifeful. And then I decided to apply Fortis Grey as a second highlight on the black it looks very extreme compared to the black, but I like the result. I know that maybe it looks like a little bit a comic miniature, but it's what I like to do for my army. I will say black is one color that at the beginning looks easy to work with, but it's not that easy to highlight because you don't have you cannot do shades on it. So here another picture of the result after applying the Fortress Grey. 
a picture of the back of the miniature after applying the same fortress gray. And in case of the red, I like to apply blood red as a highlight. I will not apply oranges or pinky colors, so I will. This will be my last highlight on the red areas. I also paint on all the free hands I did before because I want to be them more shiny. So if you can see in that pictures, I paint with blood, blood red on top of all the free hands I did on the previous stages. I also highlight a little bit the belt. Here closer picture of, of the free hand on the box operating device after applying blood red. And at this point is when I think was the best moment to assemble all the parts together. So I did all the free hands on the difficult areas like the one on the chest of the guardian. With the last gun assembled, this would be more difficult to do. Now that all the highlights and the main details are done, is the best moment to fix to glue everything together. So here I just glue everything together and I will be prepared to do the head of the guardian. So at this stage, after gluing everything together, the main remaining areas are the face and of course to repair the parts that were attached to the sprue. So I will need to add a little bit of black and grey and on that areas to cover all the attachments to the sprue. So I use black to do the A's and also to cover all the sprue unions. In that picture you can see that at the side of the box operating device there is a white spot. This was the union with the sprue. This will be pain in that stage. Then I apply white scar on the A's trying to leave the edge black. Here another picture after applying white in the middle of the A's. Then I try to I apply black on the middle of the A. What I try to do is to put to do a dot that is touching the A, the top and bottom edges of the black on the A. If you only do a very small pot, a spot on the middle of the A, it looks it will look like the A's of a madman. Yeah, it's difficult to take nice pictures of the A's. They are very small detail on the miniature. Here, final picture how the miniature is looking like at this stage. When I do faces, I always follow the same process. First I apply the base color, I do the shades, and then I do the A's. And after doing the A's, then I start doing the highlights on the flesh. The reason is, sometimes when you do the A's of the miniature, you mess up the areas around. So when I apply then flesh for second time, I try to correct all the defects I can cause during the A painting. Then I do a highlight of the flesh using elf flesh. This is very nice touch, especially I apply this on the finger and on the nose and some of the most prominent details of the face. Sorry if this picture is not very clear. Here what I wanted to show is that I did very fine lines to do the eyebrows on the miniature. In that case, I wanted to do the eyebrows, and not always I do them. For the eyebrows, I use quite a dark color this time. It's dry, dark. Reason if I do a very thin line with the original color of the hair will not be visible because I have not good contrast with the skin. So I decide to go for darker color. And that time, I wanted to do a second dry brush on the beard and some of the edges of the hair because I want the beard to pop up on this miniature. Okay, and this is the end result of the painting of that miniature. The only thing that uh, I did since the dry brush of the beard is that I paint the edge of the base 
with Fenris Grey. I always paint the edges of the bases because then the miniature is looking cleaner. So I hope you have enjoyed this paint tutorial. So now I want to show you some more pictures of what is the end result of this painting job. And I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and it's giving you some ideas and techniques that you can apply on black and red. So remember that in that miniature I try to use quite basic techniques as this is part of 100 miniatures of the same army and I didn't want to invest a huge amount of time per each individual. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching it and see you again later. Bye.